Today we tackle the question of what happened to the Decepticons after the Autobots won their war in Transformers Prime. Were they all imprisoned? Were some let free? Actually, it seems the Autobot Society is trying to erase the Decepticon faction entirely and raise an ignorant generation of new Cybertronians who barely know what Decepticons even are. Follow me for the deep dive. Yes, the Autobots won the Cybertronian War at the end of Transformers Prime, but that's not where the story ends. Transformers Prime received a sequel show, Robots in the Skies 2015, which is set a few years afterward. The tone is drastically different, and you wouldn't know it was a sequel, except for the references the show makes to its predecessor. And actually, more shows are connected to Transformers Prime, Rescue Bots, and the even more kid-friendly Rescue Bots Academy. These four shows are set in the same universe. Other shows are not, such as Cyberverse and Earthspark. They have their own stories. So the timeline goes Transformers Prime, Robots in the Skies, then Rescue Bots Academy. The original Rescue Bots actually takes place during Transformers Prime and Robots in the Skies. But I won't talk about this show, because it doesn't really say much about Decepticons. Why? Because that show focuses on a group of rescue Autobots helping humans and not participating in the war. I'll just be talking about the three shows because they give us information on how post-war Autobot society treats Decepticons. First, I highly recommend watching my video explaining what the Decepticon cause was truly about. In short, most Decepticons were part of a slave cast on Cybertron and even fought each other to the death for the entertainment of the higher castes, most Autobots. The Decepticons revolted for their rights, but with acts of terrorism, then outright war. The Decepticons went too far, but you can see their point of view. They were enslaved and oppressed. Megatron's life actually really sucked. Transformers Prime speaks about this, but the depth of the story is in the books. However, Robots in the Skies 2015 completely throws this idea aside, and the Decepticons you see in that show are absolute goofballs, mostly just insane animal bots. You look at them and scratch your head. Are they telling us this is what the war was? These are Decepticons? If you look at the story of Robots in the Skies 2015, if you really try to pay attention, you'll see that the Autobot treatment of Decepticons after the war is actually messed up. Okay, perhaps the Decepticons in Robots in the Skies 2015 are a special batch of lunatic Decepticons, and that's why they were on a prison ship. But yeah, the plot of this show is that a ship of Decepticon prisoners was flying by Earth to whatever destination, before it crashed and released the prisoners. You will also notice an absence of Decepticons on Cybertron. Society has cracked down on Decepticonism. Decepticons are in hiding or captured. Autobots have actually created special energy weapons called Decepticon Hunters. Seriously, that is what the weapons are called. It indicates the goal of the Autobots, hunt down the Decepticons. You won't see any open-mindedness to different situations of the Decepticons. See, across the episodes of Robots in the Skies 2015, the police treat being a Decepticon as their crime more than anything else. Sometimes the escape prisoners are crime bosses, other times damagers of property, but the police tend to focus on their Decepticonness. Strongarm is a young Cybertronian created after the war. You see that all new Cybertronians are slapped with the Autobot symbol despite never having fought in the war. Strongarm goes through a police academy, and she is taught that she has to arrest Decepticons on sight. She comes across Steeljaw, does not know his crime, but calls him a Decepticon fugitive who is under arrest. Now of course it's her job to go after the escaped prisoners, but she does it without knowing if it's right or wrong. Steeljaw captures her and tells her an empathetic Decepticon viewpoint. Granted, Steeljaw is a slick liar, but there is some truth in this story. Steeljaw describes that Decepticons are just being locked up for who they are, and he wants to create a safe place where Decepticons can live together. I apologize for the things I've done, but I can never go back to Cybertron. I'd be locked up again just the way you wanted to jail me before I could explain anything. I was just... But on this planet, I can begin anew with fellow prisoners who feel the same way, in peace. Now, is that so wrong? 
Later in the show, a group of Decepticons actually do create this Decepticon-only refuge. Steeljaw has the ambition to rule it, but it does seem like he and other Decepticons crave a brotherhood. The Decepticons band together surprisingly fast on Earth, and even Vehicons across the world join it. The Vehicons even take on new paint jobs. Decepticons want to be free, but Autobots carrying weapons called Decepticon Hunters are determined to round them all up and imprison them. The show has a strong us versus them mentality, except young bots are molded by the Autobots into being Autobots themselves with little idea of what a Decepticon is. The new Cybertronians could be neutral and wear no symbols, but that's not what is happening. The ignorance is most apparent in Rescuebots Academy because the kid bots encounter Laserbeak, their first ever Decepticon. The kids are just parroting things they heard about Decepticons, about them being dumb, dirty, and bad. World doesn't know what a Decepticon even is. That's the extent of the Decepticon erasure. I can't believe we risked our lives to save a dirty Decepticon. I totally know what a Decepticon is, but what's a Decepticon? On Cybertron, there were two main groups of- Decepticons are bad guys. Optimus Prime fought against them. We have to find this thing and get it out of here. Hotshot, who is just a kid, says horrible things about Decepticons like they aren't even people who should get medical help. This attitude he could only have learned from others. The group of kids argue about helping an injured Decepticon. We have to find it and help it! It's injured! Why should we help a bad guy? As a medical officer, I have taken an oath to help anyone in need. Anyone. That's crazy. Decepticons don't count as anyone. Right, Hoist? I don't know. I mean, we're rescue recruits. We've never been told that there are people we're not supposed to rescue. Yeah, but what if that bot really is as dangerous as Hotshot says? Another thing to consider in Robots in Disguise is Grimlock. Why is Grimlock one of the Decepticon prisoners? He has a Decepticon symbol, but he doesn't seem fond of the Decepticon faction at all. He wants to fight Underbite from the start. He's very excited to be allowed to be an Autobot. You're one of us. We'll get fixed it to change that Decepticon symbol. Oh yeah! <clears throat> I mean, oh yeah. Thank you, sir. His criminal record only says property damage, and it seems to have been accidental. I've seen Grimlock's rap sheet. The only crime on there is severe property damage due to Grimlock being Grimlock. So why was Grimlock thrown into a prison ship for accidental property damage? Did he ever even identify as a Decepticon, or was he labeled one just for seeming big and scary? Did he actually give himself that symbol or was it put on him? It was mentioned that the symbols had tracking devices in them, so that's why Steeljaw slashed his. A symbol could have just been put on Grimlock just to track him. The Autobots may have judged Grimlock as a Decepticon when he wasn't one, that or Grimlock was confused, believing he must be one just for being a destructive Dinobot. Grimlock certainly didn't kill anyone, but see how quick the Autobots were to just throw him off planet to a prison across the galaxy. The Autobots are purging Decepticons. If Grimlock had even had a fair trial, I'm sure he would have been given a fine or something. But such systems are not in place. Grimlock was unfairly frozen and shipped off, and who knows how many others faced the same fate. At the very end of Robots in the Skies, we actually learn that the government of Cybertron is being run by Decepticons using cloaking technology to look like Autobots. So maybe the conspiracy deepens and they were the ones pushing to get rid of the loony Decepticons. Or perhaps this was a recent takeover and the Decepticons tried to look like the legally voted in High Council to replace them. Regardless, Autobot society seems deeply against Decepticons, and that is not what these Decepticons want. One of the good ones tells the Autobots at the end of the show that she wants to settle their differences just in a better way. Uh, you saved us. Why? We share a planet. There has to be a better way to settle our differences than destroying one another. <sighs> 
Her reason for taking over the government could have been to defilify Decepticons. We know for sure that the Decepticon High Council is responsible for having Autobot War heroes disowned. They are why Bumblebee can't be anything better than a cop. So I don't think the Decepticon hatred, the creation of Decepticon hunters, are the fault of the Decepticon run governments. I believe they were against such things. Autobots are going to hate Decepticons and vice versa because of their war. Once these false leaders are taken down, Cybertron retains its pattern of Decepticon erasure. Autobot war heroes are glorified once again, such as appearing in Cybertronian trading cards. Cybertronians like Wedge adore Bumblebee. Yes, I think it's time to examine the final show on the timeline to see how Autobot society still treats Decepticons. Those kids in RescueBots Academy were really against Decepticons despite hardly knowing them. They were even sure that Laserbeak would have the goal of destroying the Academy just because Decepticons mindlessly destroy things. Even worse, that's a Decepticon logo. We brought a Decepticon into the Academy. Come on, we have to stop it. Who knows what a Decepticon might do? They're horrible. Decepticon or not, it's an injured bot. We still have to help it. I usually would agree with you, medics, but Hotshot has a point. All Decepticons are evil, right? And if we do bring it back and help it, what if it then destroys the Academy? It will destroy the Academy. That's what Decepticons do. Wedge is an interesting character among the Kid Bots in Rescue Bots Academy. He claims to have been a Decepticon in a dramatic reveal within the series. His story is that Optimus found him and guided him toward rescue work. Wedge doesn't believe Decepticons are bad or terrible and is saddened and angered when his peers insult Decepticons or don't want to help them. In fact, Wedge messes up describing himself as a Decepticon or as a former Decepticon. When he explodes in a moment of passion, he says that he is one before correcting himself. I don't care what the rest of you do. I'm going to help it. What? Why would you of all bots help a dirty Decepticon? Because I am a Decepticon. <gasps> At least I was created as one. That gives the impression that his Decepticon identity is still important to him. However, because it's not socially acceptable, he has to be an Autobot now. Wedge says he was created as a Decepticon, which could mean that right after he was forged, he was taken and raised by Decepticons. Whichever Decepticons had been part of Wedge's life were likely kind to him for him to be so defensive of them. Optimus may have taken him away from them, worried that they would be a bad influence. That could be the regular Autobot response. Don't let Decepticons raise kids, take the young robots away from them. <laughs> Funny joke, Wedge. Come on. We all know you're a good guy, not a bad guy. No, it's true. I was a Decepticon, but Optimus Prime found me and he believed in me. He showed me there was a better way. His kindness inspired me to be a better bot. Wedge's new viewpoint is influenced by what Optimus told him. Wedge believes being an Autobot now makes him a better person, but Wedge won't judge Decepticons as evil for how they were created. So, I don't believe in judging that bot on how he was created. Like me, there might be more than meets the eye. It's an odd phrase since Laserbeak wasn't made and raised as a Decepticon, but chose to be one with Soundwave. Maybe Wedge is referring to how bots were made into Decepticons because of their unfortunate pasts and are just misguided. More, Wedge answers World's question of why he never told them his story before. Wedge, why didn't you ever tell us? Because of attitudes and prejudices like hotshots. I didn't want to be judged for my past, but if that bot's not worth helping, then neither am I. And I'm going to find it. At the end of the episode, Perceptor points out that Laserbeak has no post-war criminal record and is a free bot. Research has determined that this bot is indeed a Decepticon that goes by the name Laserbeak. But more importantly, 
He currently has no criminal record and is a free bot. Okay, so that could be what Optimus originally wanted. When you think about it, all that Decepticon hunting stuff happened in Optimus' absence when he was dead. I can imagine Optimus in Transformers Prime allowing Decepticons a chance to be free as long as they lived in peace. So legally, Decepticons are free now. However, we see the damage is done and there remains a lot of prejudice and hatred against the Decepticons being passed down to the post-war generation. Finally, Laserbeak, who is considered a good Decepticon, is made into an Autobot at the end of the show. I personally did not like this decision because it told us that there are no good Decepticons, you are either an Autobot or a bad bot. Laserbeak's symbol is replaced by the Autobot one, which really cements my point that the Autobots are erasing Decepticons once and for all. Laserbeak, Wedge told me you might be reluctant to join because you're a Decepticon. I believe it's time we did something about that. Your spark is one with ours. 